Sunday. And this is a hell of a way to celebrate Easter. Is the time when uh, Jesus was crucified and died. And then he came back. He was resurrected. He, after three days, he came back to life. I've been providing these updates about the coronavirus. Um, it seems like every week it's always worse. It's always bad news. So currently there are 1.8 million cases of coronavirus worldwide. There are 113,000 deaths, more than 113,000. Uh, in America, we're the world leader in number of cases. We have 530,000 plus cases of coronavirus. Um, there are over 20,000 deaths in America now. 20,000 people have died. Um, this is bad. This is very bad. Uh, even the flu doesn't kill people this quickly. Um, 20,000 people since the outbreak. and the, it, out, the outbreak was last month. Um, all 50 states have declared a state of emergency. That's a first in the United States. Here in Oregon, where I live, there are 1,321 cases of coronavirus. There are 44 deaths statewide. In Jackson County, there are 44 cases, but there are no deaths, zero deaths so far. So God willing, that's going to stay the same. I mean, it'll probably, there'll probably be a death at some point. Our country's top epidemiologist, I think that's the word, epidemiologist. These are people who study epidemics, they study the spread of viruses, and they calculate the possible death toll that will arise from the spread of the virus. And uh, it is their belief that um, roughly 60,000 Americans will die from this virus from this coronavirus. This, they call it its official designation, the novel coronavirus COVID-19. Um, it's scary. Every day we uh, change our lives a little bit more. First it was social distancing, don't go to movie theaters. Then they said stay off buses. Only go to the grocery store if you have to. I'm sitting at home, as I have been doing for the last uh, um, almost three weeks now, I think, since March 24th. Um, and we've been staying at home and trying to stay healthy and trying to stay out of everybody's way. And the, right now there's a social distancing. Uh, everybody's supposed to stay around about six feet apart. But there's this doctor, I think his name is Dr. Fauci. And he's like a, he's an expert, he's an, he's an expert epidemiologist who, uh, he works for the president. He reports to Donald Trump, he tells him what's going on, and he gives him forecasts and projections about how many people will get sick with this virus, how many people will get infected by it, and how many people will die from it. And his projection was that 200,000 people will die. 200,000 Americans. Right here, just America, 200,000. Um, then he changed his mind. He was saying that uh, that estimate was um, it was too high. So he changed it to 60,000. Now he thinks that 60,000 people are going to die from this virus. 60,000. That's still a lot of people. And um, I feel so helpless, so powerless. There's nothing I can do to help anybody. Um, as far as social distancing goes, I have been doing that. I don't go anywhere unless I really, really have to. And obviously you have to grocery shop. But I try uh, to not really go to the grocery store. I go to convenience stores. Just a quick in and out. Go in there, get some milk. Boom, you're done shopping. Get out of there. You know, or... Um, I have been eating out a lot. And this is killing me financially. I'm using DoorDash and Grubhub to bring me food. Because I don't have a car. I can't go out into the world anyway if I wanted to. They took my bus away. The RVTD has canceled the Eagle Point bus because, I guess, number one, there probably weren't that many riders. Number two, they don't want people from Medford to bring the virus to Eagle Point. And that makes sense. 
Um, and it's just temporarily suspended, um, hopefully. Once this is over and done with, uh, once, the flat, once the curve has been flattened and once the cases have subsided to maybe almost zero, you know, uh, what do they call that? Uh, do they, if it plateaus? So if it levels off, if the cases of coronavirus level off, Maybe it'll bring the bus back. What I've got here is a T-bone steak dinner that came from Sherry's. They delivered it here. And I've also got some Easter candy. Got some Cadbury eggs and things like that. And, uh, peanut butter egg. The Reese's peanut butter egg. But look, there's something else. Something I've never seen before. Got a Reese's egg. That's an, I'm gonna have to try that. See what that's all about. But uh, I and mean, this is probably cold. I'm gonna bet that it is. That's all right. Got some shrimp. Salty, like it came out of the ocean. And... It's pretty, pretty plump, little plump shrimps, big plump, plump shrimps here. Mm. This isn't quite how you thought you'd spend Easter, is it? And the weather's getting warmer. It's like 80 degrees during the day. It's close too. Now, I need to know how they did on the steak. You know, they're not really an official steakhouse, but they make steak. Sherry's makes, has meat. Their specialty, I think, is like pie. You know, if you ever go to Sherry's, you should try one of their pies. I decided not to get a pie because the cost of ordering food through a, a food delivery service like DoorDash, for example, um, is quite expensive. This steak dinner cost me almost $40. If I were to sit down in the restaurant, it would have been half that. Easy. The steaks are okay. I, I, I taste gristle when in that bite there. I think they just, they, they're not too selective about the qual the cut of meat they use. Mm. Some broccoli. At least that's healthy. Mm. No, it's all healthy. Steak and shrimp and there's mashed potatoes underneath all this. Mm. All right, let's let's dig into this uh, this Reese's peanut butter cream egg, which is different. I like the Cadbury ones a lot. So it's a chocolate egg. I mean, that's pretty much what I figured it would be. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, you know that Reese's peanut butter cups are my favorite candy. That's basically what this is. It's an egg full of peanut butter. Chocolate egg full of peanut butter. Mmm. Well, it's a little rich. I'm told that we may not have much of a summer this year. Um, this lockdown is probably going to last for another six months. This is a time of year when everybody likes to hit the road and do things. They like to get outside. They like to go places. They like to go to the coast, at least in Oregon, if you live on a coastal state, like California. Think of all those Californians who can't go to the beach right now. Venice Beach, there's nobody there. I mean, there's going to be a few that 
break the, the lockdown order, but you know, uh, the police are starting to crack down on it. And then we got this salad here. Um, the churches are closed, believe it or not. You can't even worship God in the United States. There's no guarantee that you're safe in your home. I mean, if the virus is like lighter than air, and there's oxygen in my house, so wouldn't the virus be in this house too? I mean, every time you open the door, air comes in, and the virus would be in the air, and it would come in your house, wouldn't it? There's a lot of what ifs right now. What if your favorite restaurant doesn't open back up? What if the cost of everything suddenly skyrockets because of the increased demand and the diminished supply of just about everything? I mean, right now there's no toilet paper to be found anywhere. It reminds me of when Popeye's chicken ran out of their chicken sandwiches and everybody's like, well, how come they can't just make more real quick? So what did I think of that Reese's peanut butter egg? Well, it's okay. It's not as good as this Cadbury egg which I'm going to eat right now. And is it my imagination, or have these eggs gotten smaller over the years? I don't know, granted, when I was a kid, you know, my hands were a lot smaller, but these eggs, these eggs are really tiny. They're really small. And they're still expensive. I mean, they're like a dollar a piece. Life has just become so boring. I mean, all I do... All I do now is just, I work, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to have a job, and I could change. It's always subject to change, even if there wasn't a virus going on, you know. You always have to worry about being fired, and that's never fun. You gotta think about how, when the, when the Bible was written, uh, during that time, we were dealing with pestilence then, and that hasn't changed. It's weird how even in this advanced time that we live in, where we rely on technology for everything, a virus can come along and threaten to wipe us all out. So this steak tastes kind of waxy. Um, if you're going to eat steak, I recommend that you go to Ro uh, Roadhouse, Roadhouse Grill. Of course, that's not an option for me because they don't deliver and I can't go to them. I can't even use the bus. I mean, there's still a bus that goes from White City to Medford, but they say that unless it's a dire emergency, you can only use the bus to go to the grocery store, or to work, or to a doctor. And I'm not going to start lying to bus drivers about why I'm on the bus. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to say, well, I just want to go get a steak. You know, they're going to say, well, you idiot, you got all kinds of steak where you live. You can go to Walmart. You can, you can order delivery. It doesn't really feel like Easter... But you got to have faith that God's up there watching. And that <clears throat> before too long, this coronavirus is going to disappear. It's just going to fade away like the Spanish flu did 100 years ago. But let me tell you something about that. Um, that went on for like three years. They had to worry about that flu, that Spanish flu, from 1918 to 1921. And I think that contributed to the Great Depression that occurred that same decade. So I don't want to scare anybody, but you got it's got to be in the back of your mind that we're heading for a Great Depression. We're going to see that again, and it's odd how it always happens. Like it what happened a hundred years ago, now it's happening again. Easter. Nobody's going to church today. They can't. And nobody's hunting for Easter eggs either. 
So everyone's getting the short end of the stick over this coronavirus. Everyone's getting ripped off. You know, it's one thing not to be able to hunt for eggs, but not to be able to socialize with your friends and rebel in the Lord's presence in the house of the Lord. Um, that's just inexcusable. You know, I was thinking about the political ramifications of this virus. Well, you have to admit the timing's pretty bad. I mean, this is an election year. We're going to have a presidential election in November. But the world's distracted. You can't go golfing. You can't go outside. You can't go shopping. You can't go to the coast. But they're saying that come November, millions of Americans will be able to leave their homes and vote for the president. Huh. Well, it makes me wonder if after Donald Trump is reelected, and he probably will be, I'm going to predict it now, he's going to get his second term. This whole coronavirus mess. We, it may go by the wayside. We may never hear from it again. All of a sudden, it'll just disappear. They'll say, well, you know, nobody's dying from it, so it's over. Yeah, it's fine, whatever. You know, and then it'll, life will go back to normal. That'll be weird. I mean, I think that's how it's going to happen. I think this is uh, just a distraction. This virus is meant to distract us from something. Well, I had a Cadbury egg. I had that uh, peanut butter filled egg. And I had one of these classic ones, these classic milk chocolate Reese's peanut butter eggs. I used to love those when I was a kid. Still, I mean, I still enjoy them now, but I try not to eat sweets very often. That was a delicious. I've got sweets here. I'm already getting kind of a sugar high, sugar high going on. I don't know. Is this really a steak? Is it a steak? Should I just eat it with my hand? Mm. It's not bad, it's just it's some, um, I don't know, is it processed? It doesn't, it, for some reason it doesn't taste as good as a steak you'd get from a steakhouse. It's not as tender, it's kind of rubbery. Muffin, what do you think? Nah, she always sniffs stuff, she doesn't really want it. She'll just walk away from it. She's not like a dog. I will say this, their shrimps are pretty good. Like I said, they're, I like how plump they are. Mm. They're not too tough. Well, anyway, this is uh, Easter I'm in, the, in my household. It's just me. I'm not married, I don't have kids. So that was a quick update from me talking to you about the coronavirus that's been going around. Just wreaking havoc all over the world. All over the world. So my message is to just stay strong somehow. Take comfort in something. You know, today's Easter. Maybe think about God a little bit. Maybe pray. I already have. And I'll probably pray some more later on. But I know that we'll survive this but I don't know what kind of shape the world's gonna be in for a while fingers crossed that our economy is gonna rebound and COVID-19 will go away but get this 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 doctor this Fayucci Fayucci Dr. Fayucci He's saying, don't shake hands ever again. Huh. Man, this guy's pretty extreme. Why is he doing that? Why is he scaring everybody? What does he have to gain from that? But I do have one question. I mean, if handshakes are off limits, where does that leave sexual intercourse and uh, all the modes by which sexual intercourse can be achieved? Um, 
I mean, because if, if you're not supposed to shake hands, because they're like, oh, don't, don't, I don't want to shake hands, that's gross, that's disgusting, what, what about, you know, I, you know, just think about that kind of stuff, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, there's worse things than shaking a person's hand, you know, like, well, I'm not going to shake your hand, but hey, if you want to sleep with me, that's fine, we can do that, you know, we can have some fun, but, you know, that's weird, it's very weird to think about. You can't shake hands, but you can still be physically intimate. Um, how does that work? Happy Easter, everybody. No Easter egg hunt. No Jesus. You can't even talk. You can't even go see Jesus. You can talk to him in your own private prayer closet. You know, but you can't publicly worship Jesus. In the United States, I feel like we've taken a giant step backwards that our society has uh, regressed back to the like Dark Ages or Middle Ages or whatever age that was where people were, uh, weren't allowed to worship their God of choice. Like Christians, they weren't allowed to worship Jesus. They would be executed, put to death. Don't forget, the main reason people came to America was for religious freedom. They came here to worship God. Isn't that ironic? Well, anyway, uh, this virus is important. It's killing people. That's why there's a lockdown. Um, the, the idea is, is that the if you social distance, use protocols, and uh, stay away from each other, people just avoid contact with other people that maybe not that many people will die but it's already off to a pretty bad start I mean almost two million uh, worldwide two million people on this planet have been infected with the virus that's pretty terrible that 20,000 Americans have died <laughs> Think about what you're going to do the moment the governor says, Okay, all right, it's been lifted. Go enjoy your summer. Can you imagine spending 4th of July in your house? 4th of July, no parade. We, have a, we make a big fuss out of the 4th of July because we are a town that celebrates our veterans. And I really hope that by the time the 4th of July rolls around, this will all be behind us. We won't be shut-ins. We won't be cloistered shut-ins. Misanthropes. Paying $40 for steak dinners. Happy Easter. Please stay safe. Okay? We can get through this. Stay safe and God bless each and every one of you, okay? Thank you.